Greetings and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team video. Today I'm going over a new series because this is a Patreon requested video, but about how to beat certain kill teams. So this is something I've been meaning to do for a while. I mean, I've been meaning to do guides on kill teams. But yeah, today I'm going to go through intercession squads as requested by my patrons, going over just how to beat them and general tactics. But before we get into things, please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of this video and this new series. Was it helpful? Did I miss anything? Just let me know down below. And if you want, I've got a Discord you can check down in the episode description, as well as a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. But yeah, let's get on with the video. So what is this guide about? And this follows the format I'll use for pretty much all of these going forward. So I have generalized tips for beating this specific kill team, which in this instance is the intercession squad kill team. I'll go over the strengths and weaknesses of said team. I'll cover their tricks and combos you need to watch out for. I'll cover their general loadout, so common operatives that you will see players use and then i'll mention some matchup specific tech so i i won't go into too depth but i'll cover it for some teams so for the intercession kill team who are they for obviously this is only going to be a brief overview if you want a more in-depth review of this kill team i've got a video i've done on it which you can check out on my channel but basically they are a six space well six person kill team using well six operatives and they're using primaris marines notably a mix of intercessors and assault intercessors they're a free kill team which have been given by games workshop which was great and currently at the time of this video they are the most popular kill team in the world and by quite a big margin popular than any other kill team we've had before so you're very likely to see them they are a very popular kill team and even competitively they're doing very well as well they're winning lots of tournaments and well yeah they're everywhere so the strengths for this kill team first all the operatives are 14 wounds base which makes their break points for death very high as you need lots of damage five plus weapons for consistent kills now this is a difference because most normal marines are 12 wounds or 11 wounds if you're from the compendium so being 14 wounds even if they are 13 wounds it means their chance to kill is much higher and much harder sorry so if you had a damage four weapon if they only had 12 wounds and you got four hits if they failed two saves they're dead uh, if you had an ap2 weapon they're dead but because they have 14 wounds base even if three four damage attacks get through that still leaves them on two wounds so it actually takes a lot more investment to kill a single marine they have powerful chapter tactics with the most common being rapid and durable so rapid is plus one black movement and durable is minus one crit damage with rapid and methodical for into the dark where methodical is you know you ignore overwatch penalties and you cannot be injured on open boards it's because you've got the mobility and you can you know negate a lot of damage while on into the dark you can just go on guard for free you know no penalties for just moving up and going on guard durable makes killing intercession even harder and has no minimum cap on damage as of speaking because durable is minus one crit damage so effectively brings those four five damage weapons down to four four it's uh really good against damage profiles that are the same so like three three or four three because it brings those those guns at the moment down to like three two or if like the weird thing if you're attacking with like a damage 2-2 two, two or a damage 1-1 one, one weapon, that goes to 1-0 or 2-1 on crits, which is weird. But it makes them very tough to kill. Uh, and because you may say it's only on crits, but remember, because of that 14 wound base, it's effectively minus one damage to normal attacks if they were 12 wounds. They have security and solid faction tack up. So security is one of the best faction tack. Well, security is one of the best archetypes in the game because it's just really consistent and it, you know allows teams to come to you because you can just sit back and start scoring points or just by playing the mission. And they have some decent faction tack ups, which the main one being shock and awe, where you if you control uh, objective your opponent controlled last turning point, you get a victory point. So you can kind of you know sit back, let your opponent you know control some objectives and then go back and steal them so it's really good and they also have uh, seek and destroy as well which is a nice mix so they can flex between being defensive or very aggressive bolter discipline and shock assault are free and these are for other marines including like chaos space marines they're one command point to either double shoot if you don't fight or double fight if you don't shoot and the double shoot is with bolt weapons their one is slightly different so they can fire a bolt weapon and an all weapon 
but they can also fire twice and fight or fight twice and shoot and they all, it's all for free and built in so intercessors have built in bolt discipline whereas assault intercessors have built in shock assault so they're very efficient you no longer need to spend a seat command point to go like do i fight twice do i shoot twice you just have it baked in they have powerful strategic ploys notably like they have their own bolt disciplines so they either like the devastator doctrine which is if you're shooting at someone more than red away you get to re-roll a dice then you've got the close one where if they're within red, you get to reroll a dice. And then you've got the assault doctrine. So if you charge, you get to reroll one dice. They've also got, and they shall know no fear, which makes them immune to being injured and all APL modifiers, which, you know, on 14 wounds makes them highly, highly durable. They've got adaptive tactics, which allows them to swap around one of their chapter tactics, which I'll get into later. They have transhuman, which is okay, so they can choose to turn a, a retained save into a crit when shot at. But they also have angels of death to fight at the end of the firefight phase, or wrath of vengeance to shoot when they are killed. They also get free grenades, because one of their specialists is a grenadier, so built-in grenades is always good. They have great damage output and equipment. It's very easy for them to get 4-5 damage consistently, either via melee or shooting, with decent AP1 as well, and they just pump out tons of consistent 4-5 damage, which is really hard for people to deal with. And once again, they have a really strong section of equipment, notably the ore specs, but because they have free grenades, they effectively get 5 extra equipment points. And then their bolt guns either have ceaseless or piercing one, which is really strong. Obviously, you've got one which is heavy and AP one, but you, you never generally take that. Ceaseless and piercing one bolters is very good because you can now tailor for the matchup. Like if you're against tougher, more resilient opponents, you can go for piercing one. But if you're against more squishy, low wound opponents, ceaseless is better for those free rerolls. So for the intercession, their weakness is that they are only six operatives. And especially with the missions we have, you know, a lot of missions, if you're playing on open boards, are six objectives. And even if you're playing on Into the Dark, you know, there's a lot of missions where you kind of have to split up a lot. So only having six bod bodies can only go so far. They can be easily overwhelmed, especially if they're outnumbered heavily. Once again, because they're only six. They have no ways to modify their own APL, so they are all capped at free APL. They can't go to four, do like mission actions for free, which does limit them for certain missions. They are severely weak to AP1 and AP2 guns with high damage, like notably Melter and Plasmas. They have no invons, and these kind of guns just melt them. They struggle against teams with damage negation. So this is any team that gets minus one damage. So like, you know, Legionary, Nurgle, and then the Breachers with their strategic ploy because it effectively knocks their guns down from either 4-5 to 3-4 or from 3-4 to 2-3. And even their melee attacks go down to 3-4, which they struggle to deal with. It's one of their hugest weaknesses. And dedicated enemy operatives that are designed for melee are usually better than their own. Now, it's not always the case, but you have to remember their assault guys are just five attacks. Hitting on three is four, five, but that's it. Like you've got, you know, even the butch is a bit of a meme. It's still four attacks. Rerolling on the charge with higher damage, but notably like the anointed who has five attacks with all its damage negation and rending and lethal five up, especially when it's unleashed the beast. Even the locusts, you know, like any enemy operative that hits on with five attacks, it hits on twos or threes with like lots of built-in rules can mess them up especially if they're power weapons as well so even though they are good in combat you need to watch out for dedicated enemy melee operatives they are very command point intensive they don't have any free like strategic ploys or ways to get extra command points like some other teams we've seen and if you're not careful you can just burn through all your command points and you have to decide which doctrine to use each turning point. So you can't use Devastator, Tactical, and Assault Doctrine. You have to pick. And like the common scene, thing I've seen with Intercessor players is they go for Tactical Doctrine and then they end up wanting to shoot long range and not getting the rerolls. Or they fo focus on Devastator Doctrine for the long range rerolls with their guns, but then they realize they're too close to their opponent. And if you go Assault Doctrine, you're only getting that reroll if you charge. So you kind of have to pick which one to use. So for intercession, what do you need to watch out for? 
So one of their tricks is Rapid switching to Jeweler. So Rapid is plus black movement, and Jeweler is part of that same family tree. So the chapter tactics is under Martial Zealotry. So if you're against the melee team, they will spend a command point during setup well, during kill team construction or whatever, to switch from Rapid to Jeweler. So Jeweler is each time there's operative fights in combat. E each time you parry with a crit, you can select additional normal hit of your opponent to be discarded. So they have kind of a way to get inbuilt Storm Shields. And this is really good when they face against teams with lots of melee, especially when they combine with Tilting Shields, which I get to later. But it allows them to be surprisingly flexible. But generally, they go with rapid for the movement. And if they're against like a high power melee team, they'll switch to dueler to just mess up those because they have the wounds to go through prolonged fights against most teams. And then for shooting, operatives generally are firing twice, but they can potentially fire three to four times with a single operative. So they can fire a third time with Overwatch and then a fourth time with one of their strategic ploys, which I mean tactical ploys, which is Wrath on Wrath of Vengeance. So when they're incapacitated before being removed, they can perform a free shoot action. And notably, when they perform that free shoot action, it doesn't have to be at the same target. So like even when I've been playing with them, uh, like I've used the Grenadier, so I fired my frag grenade into a guy using like uh, the Devastator Doctrine, hit four guys. Then I've used the normal bolt rifle, so which has piercing, shot another guy, then got my overwatch with another crack shot. And then when I died on death, I fired another frag grenade because you don't have to fire at the target. And a common mistake I see people playing against them or with them is they assume whoever kills that intercessor marine gets shot back. Nope, it can be any target. So you can get crazy efficiency, especially if they get like a gunner onto a vantage point. So it's something to watch out for. A lot of the time they will also shoot on death with a specific operative as bait. So for example, the Grenadier, they will slingshot the, grenad uh, the Grenadier to charge someone. So charging like nine inches, kill them, then throw a frag grenade. And then they'll either overwatch with their pistol or if you kill them, then they can crack grenade someone else or they can fire the crack and then bait out a frag, something like that, because they will use the charge to catapult them or tie themselves in combat with you. So then when you do fall back to shoot them, you're now in a place where they can now punish you for falling back instead of fighting them. Other things they do is multi-charge to fight twice because they have that built in fighting twice. And also they have the ability to fight at the end of the turning point with Angel of Death, similar to Commandos for a command point for potentially three fights in a turning point with a single operative. Even in melee, you have to be careful because they will just churn through stuff. Then for like notable operatives, you've got the Plasma Pistol Assault Sergeant. So this is their only source of plasma weaponry. So this is usually used against elites, but it's something you can generally see. So their Chainsaw hits on twos, five attacks, four five, but it's that Plasma Pistol that they will overcharge and save CP because they can literally just go charge, kill someone, Plasma Pistol, and then if you kill my Sergeant, I'll Plasma Pistol you again. Then you've got like the Doom Guy Marine. So what is this? So it's basically using two forms or one form of equipment. So one form is with the Intercessor Sergeant. You take the Auto Bolt Rifle and you give it Reclusium Blessed Bolts, which give plus one damage to its profile. So it goes to hitting on twos with reroll ones, doing four or five damage, firing twice, which generally melts pretty much everything. Then you have another variation for it where you either give uh, vengeance class scope with a bolt rifle and the same blessed bolts to either your sergeant or a normal guy so they either hit on twos with lethal five up ap1 doing four five damage or hit on threes usually with the resulting like assault doctor uh, well doctorate tactical or devastated doctrine to farm those rerolls but either one is really strong it does cost six to three equipment points but that will delete a surprising amount of operatives even Especially against elite teams, the Doom Guy Marine on the leader with the Vengeance class scope and Reclusion Bolts, because all of a sudden it's doing four or five damage, hitting on twos, lethal five up, going to AP one. It can actually surprisingly bl like blast through Marines. Then you also have the Or Specs. So the Or Specs is two equipment points, and it has it's one action point to use. Select one enemy operative visible or within red of this operative until the end of the turning point. That operative, that enemy operative, is not obscured. 
and defense dice cannot be retained as a result of cover for that enemy operative. And you cannot perform this while in engagement range. So what the all specs does is allow you to pick an enemy operative and go, you can never be concealed this turning point. So even if they're hiding behind light cover and they're, they're requiring on obscuring, you can suddenly pop this and then just get your, your gunner to eliminate someone. It's very powerful because you just put it on your melee guys who move up the board and you effectively only need line of sight. So you need to watch out for that. And then you've got tilting shields, which are frequent points. So each time this operative fights in combat, it, your opponent cannot retain attack dice results of less than a six as critical hits, e.g. as the result of lethal X plus or rending. So it basically means they can only count crits if they roll them. So if they have rending, they won't get to turn another dice into a crit. And if they have lethal five up or higher, that will just go to six. Like they still need crits. So it messes up a lot of stuff like the legionary anointed. Basically anything relying on rending or lethal five up. So something to watch out for because all of a sudden it makes their, you know, fairly oh, like average in terms of like damage output of their assault intercessors a big threat because now your guys charging them go down to their level. So for Intercession Squad, their general loadout is Versa Elites, is usually the Plasma Pistol Assault Sergeant, with a gunner, usually with a bolt rifle for that lethal 5 up on its second shot, I mean piercing on its, lethal sh on its second shot, Grenadier because free grenades, one Intercessor, usually with guns, uh, you know like the lethal 5 up, maybe plus one damage, and then two Assault Intercessors, or if you've gone with the Gun Sergeant, they may change that to three Assault Intercessors. But that's the general loadout versus Elites, because you've got your Plasma Pistol, then you've got uh, your Grenade Launcher, which has a Crack Grenade, you have a Crack Grenade, and then you have another Intercessor with 4-5 lethal 5 up damage. So you kind of just blast a lot of stuff, and you've got a lot of melee threat as well. Versus Horde teams, the general loadout against Horde teams. So this is teams with like 10 or more models or 7 wounds and a 5 up save. You've got the Bolter Sergeant. So this is usually the Ceaseless guy with uh, plus 1 damage. Then you've got a Gunner uh, and then you've got a Grenadier and 3 normal Intercessors. Because what you can do is give them Combat Blades because they're 3-4 damage anyway in combat. But going to 3-5 just means, you know, it's just they can charge if they want to but their guns make them, you know, really max out killing operatives who outnumber them because you're so squishy. Now, your choice is either to go ceaseless or the bolt rifles, so like the auto bolt rifles for ceaseless or the piercing ones. I prefer piercing, but a lot of people go for the ceaseless bolters on their intercessors. Depends how command point you want, intensive do you want to be. But these are the two generalized loadouts which are trying to hi highlight. You can go into more in-depth ones, but then it becomes more player specific. But these are the these are loadouts you'll generally encounter when you play against intercession. So how to beat intercession? You need to maximize the usage of melter slash plasma similar weapons. So anything that has 5, 6 or higher damage with AP 1 or 2, ideally AP 2. Because remember, if you overcharge a plasma into a marine, if you get 4 hits, that marine is dead. Because they, it will go, they only have 1 defense dice, you will be doing a minimum of 15 damage, and they have 14 wounds. That kills a marine. Melters are great for this too. Cracks, you know, you're relying on like the AP1. So AP1 weapons aren't bad, but ideally you want to maximize AP2. If you lack AP2 weapons, you kind of just have to do force of fire. But if you do have AP2 weapons, obviously use them. Play around their six activation limit. Obviously, if you have like 14 to 12 operatives, remember you get an additional at least six activations before them. So you can do things like trying to make intercession go first and then play around that. And, you know, you, you've got missions that dictate, especially if they have a lot of objectives or require people to split up a lot, you can play around that as well. Minimize their ability to get a shot on death, either via obscuring, which can be difficult, because of the all specs. But what I mean by this is when you shoot an intercessor, always remember to shoot as if you're obscured if they try and shoot you back. So remember, it's really easy for you to get a shot on someone and then hide most of your base and model behind like more than white from a piece of obscuring terrain. So even if you don't kill them or you do kill them and they get an overwatch or they shoot on death, they can't shoot the attacker. But you kind of have to keep in mind, especially with the shoot on depth, how they can shoot at any target. So you need to keep in mind that, especially if someone has been all specs and they're still alive. And the other thing is, 
If someone's concealed, shoot them. Go and walk into their face, shoot them, because they have to follow the normal rules for shooting. So they can't fire while in engagement range. So if you've killed them in combat, they can't shoot you. And if they're concealed, they can't shoot you as well because they have a conceal order. So important things to remember there. Avoid charge blocking operatives unless they have zero command points. So, you know, charge blocking is charging an activated model with one of your operatives to keep them alive to buy you time. The only problem against intercessors, as I said, they can spend a CP to fight on death at the end of the turning point. And a lot of people forget this. So... Yeah, only charge block them if they have no command points. Otherwise, you're just walking into their trap because it keeps them alive from shooting for the whole turning point, And then they just fight you and kill you. And always go for full kills. Don't leave wounded operatives alive. Because another thing I see is people go, oh, I've knocked like three operatives down to like six wounds or four wounds. So next turning point, I can deal with them. And I can go, yeah, potentially. But remember, if they win initiative, they will pop and they show no, no fear. So now they count as not being injured. And then they will just mess you up. It does feel like a waste focus firing down like three to four operatives to kill a single Marine, but it's worth it. You need to do it to minimize their activations and minimize how much board presence they have. So always go for full kills, never leave anyone wounded. Obviously, if your dice fail you, that's another thing. But yeah, focus fire down. Don't leave anyone alive. So intercession faction specific strats so these are for some specific kill teams that you can use to counter intercession so for pathfinders outside of being pathfinders overcharged ions if you get five hits that's a dead intercessor because you're ap1 five six damage with five dice so even if you know with five hits they can only save two hits which means three will go through and do 15 damage auto kill Transpectral turning point one to bait out and they shall know no fear because especially if you haven't got a kill or you've killed a full marine making one of their marines minus one apl usually forces the other marine player to pop a command point to just auto go into and they shall know no fear which is great for you because especially if they're down an operative now they're spending the CP on no one who's injured just because one guy is minus one APL. Then you've got the Melter and EMP grenades. So what I like to do is last activation of turning point one, plus one APL to the Grenadier, move and dash, Melter, Melter grenade one guy with a fusion grenade, and then usually they're nearby people and then turning point one of the next, uh, turning point two, first activation, either a worthy cause or go first and EMP that guy who will bounce into everyone else. And with an EMP and Melter, you should kill one Marine as well as in like flicking away at other Marines, which is great. And obviously Markalite spam. Because remember, if you get free Markalites on an Intercessor, your normal guys do crazy damage because they're still 4-5 damage. They'll be hitting on 4s with rerolls, especially with Bonded. So, you know, always follow with free with Markalite spam. Legionary, you go full Nurgle for that minus one damage. It's Legionary are really good counter for Intercession just because Intercession don't have that much burst lethal damage. So when you hurt their normal damage, you live a lot longer. The Nurgle Anointed is a huge counter to this kill team as well. Really messes them up. They have to dictate at least two to three operatives to kill your Anointed. So you really want to do a lot of work with them. And even your leader with like the Demon Blade will just mess them up. So Legionary are a great counter overall. Hunter Clade have Transonic Blades, which are five dice hitting on freeze, four, six with rending. So you want the Transonic Blades for the rending. Now they can counter that with their Tilting Shields, but you can fight twice to mitigate that. Because remember, four, six going to four, five is still better than your normal like your cord claw is going from 4-4 four, four with balanced it's just you want to you've got the operatives to throw into them because even if one uh as, uh one rust stalker heavily injures a marine and then dies that's still a great trade for you because if you've knocked them down to two wounds or even killed them you've just done that with one model and obviously you've got a plasma which you can overcharge and lots of ap guns but mainly for the assassins you want transonic blades void dancer troops so this is what people normally consider a bad matchup but generally you want two to three kisses with upgraded damage so they're four six damage well they're four seven right but they'll go to four six because the way that works is if you charge an intercessor you can do murderous entrance so you will strike and immediately do 10 damage and if you've got two more hits, even if they parry one of your hits, you will then do four damage, which is 14 damage, and that will kill a Marine. So, because most people just go four blades, but actually what you want to do is go three kisses, 
maybe some blades or rending, but mainly well, blades. But it's because kisses are six or seven damage with crits for free, normal damage base, and you can upgrade them to four. And then obviously curtain falls. So unless you're playing epic, you do want to switch to epic when you can. But let's say you don't roll any crits and epic isn't active for your allegory, you can just plink someone and then fall back. Or if you only roll a single crit, you can plink someone and then catapult away. And it's really like a death by a thousand cuts, but you have that way to outmaneuver them. So what are the best and worst kill teams to use against the intercession squad? So some of the strongest counters are definitely Hunter Clade. They're a mixed shooting and combat team with powerful factors for both. Lots of maneuverability and power, so a natural good counter. Pathfinders. So Pathfinders aren't as good as you would expect because a really good intercession player can quickly delete your targets. As in terms of if they kill your two ions and your marksman early, you will struggle to kill them. But if you if they don't do that and you spend turning point one putting all the marker lights on, you can just point and click delete marines. Legionary, as I said, Nurgle just messes them up. Breaches are a really good counter because they all get stims and minus one damage. It's actually almost impossible, in my opinion, for a Legionary uh, for intercession to beat breaches because they will go 12 guys and it's just it's just too much to deal with especially how breaches currently exist. And then oddly Kazakin, because Kazakin are really good at deleting elite teams. So for example, they have three plasma, uh, two plasma weapons with a plasma pistol and plasma gun and a melter gun. And with elite points and command points, they can force auto hits. So for example, the melter and plasma, they should roll two hits, two misses, spend a CP or two to get another hit and then elite points into four hits. And then you just delete a Marine. And they can do that potentially three times a turning point which makes them really good at killing elites. It's one of the few things they're good at. And then their weakest counters, commandos. Commandos just don't have the damage to deal with them. Like oddly melee, they can't deal with the with the intercessors. And shooting, once they've deleted your like dynamite and your rocket boy, you really struggle against them. Phobos, they just don't have the damage output overall. You can stun guys, but it's, it's not worth it. Then the Vitiates, it's just because, you know, these guys will just charge you. Like, they'll go full assault incestors against the Vitiates and just charge and mess you up. Or ignore your shooting altogether. Even your your Death Flamers aren't great against intercession because they're durable. And then of uh, and then Wormblade. Uh, because Wormblade are a ma mainly a shooting team. They don't actually have that great AP high damage weaponry, apart from the Mining Laser. And even the Kelomorph isn't too good at shooting a marine because it it's kind of it'll have to like fire several times the locust is good into marines but he'll quickly get like overwhelmed and killed he may kill a marine or like kill one and injure t another but he'll struggle so it, it's mainly shooting teams that struggle against intercession but specifically commandos and those four so for the overview uh, here's a picture of me because uh, I didn't want to use my camera. Uh, I didn't have the time, I'm afraid. So if you've missed my face, look at that. Look at that still. Uh, so it always comes down to practice. So no matter what I say, practice always prevails and nothing is ever concrete. Dice are dice. So even if you're running the worst team possible, your dice can always go through. But practice is the important thing to beat intercession. And if you're struggling, always just keep at it, right? Try and analyze what you've done wrong and learn from it. Try and fact, like the thing about Kill Team, there's a lot of stuff to remember, but it's not too much. It's not as in-depth as other games in terms of what you need to remember. There's still a lot to remember, but not to an overwhelming extent. And as I said, with the practice, the more you play into these, you'll be more familiar with their tricks. As I said, for me, this is based off of like several games I've had against very good intercession players in London. So, you know, that, that's why I'm able to talk about this and I've developed my own strategies. So these are some of my own strategies I use to beat them. So this should help with you. And remember, yeah, you know, like never tell tell me the odds. As I said, dice can be dice, but you want to maximize, you know, like their low numbers, their severe weakness to high AP, high damage weapons. And yeah, they're only six guys, but they are a very strong kill team. So don't underestimate them at the same time. 
which I, I see a lot of people just go, they're six guys, what's the worst that they can do? And then they get destroyed. But that's pretty much it for me today. Please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of this guy. Do you like it? Do you want to see more? What did I miss? Just let me know. And if you want, I've got a Discord you can check out in the episode description below, as well as a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. And remember, this is a Patreon requested video, and without them, this wouldn't be possible. So I'll just quickly thank my Patrons. So for my adepts of the crit, I have Zamaru, Screech, Sam, Ninjali83, Kenzie, John Thomas, Captain Murder, Dave, Daniel, Average Joe 27, and Adzik. And then for my veterans of the crit, I have Samja. So thank you so much. Your support really means a lot to me and helps the channel so much. And also remember, this was requested by all my veterans, of, uh, adepts of the crit and higher. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me today and this week. I've got a lot of practicing and stuff because I need to paint lots of miniatures and I've got the Kill Team Grand Final in New Mexico no next week so I have some content for that coming up soon. But yeah, you know, the, I've been mainly to do Kill Team guides so instead of doing a guide for a Kill Team I've started guides how to beat Kill Teams. So yeah, let me know. Be interesting to see what you guys think. But remember, until next time no matter what guides say you always have a chance as long as you can roll a crit.